Have you noticed it's no longer good enough to try and live in such a way that pleases you and doesn't outrage others? No, as if this was too easy a goal and we needed a refinement on the human condition to make a sufficient challenge of it, we are now supposed to live in the moment. It's not enough to work towards being happy later, you have to be happy now. Right now. No, now. Not then. Not soon. Now. Well, that's unfair of me. I realise most of the living in the moment ears are not saying that's the only way of being happy that counts. Although, asterisk, some of them definitely are saying exactly that. They're recommending this as a way to become happy. Are they mad? Apart from the obvious paradox that any time I'm checking to see if I'm living in the moment or not, I cease to live in the moment, or rather the moment I'm living in becomes a moment of checking, the range of pleasures available to people living in the moment is both small and, well, bestial. Unless you're in the middle of something delicious, intoxicating, carnal, or whatever the posh word for sneezing is, you're stuck. And out of those, the only one that requires no un-in-the-moment planning or forethought whatsoever is sneezing. And nice though a good sneeze is, after three they get annoying. And what's more, I don't think it's as easy as all that to tell whether or not you're enjoying a moment in that moment. I remember watching the film Mulholland Drive and believing that I was enjoying myself as I anticipated the dramatic ending that would cleverly resolve and make sense of this intriguing mystery. But there wasn't one. It just sort of stopped. And once I realised that, I had no choice but to retrospectively downgrade what I had thought had been my enjoyment in the moment. My enjoyment was predicated on it amounting to something. It was an IOU to be redeemed at the point of pleasurable revelation, by which I don't mean the lesbian sex scene. And as there was none, the IOU was never redeemed. Therefore, I hadn't enjoyed myself. Where this is really starkly obvious, of course, is sport. Of the three big matches Andy Murray played this year, the one I enjoyed most at the time, by a country mile, was his last Olympic game, where he went into the lead early and stayed there until he won. The one I think I enjoyed most now is the US Open, where it was touch and go for hours and then he won. Much more exciting, which is why I value it now, and hated it at the time. Because at the time, I had no way of knowing that the moment I was reluctantly suffering through wasn't a moment on a long and exhausting journey towards defeat, like the Wimbledon final, which neither in the moment me nor looking back me enjoyed at all. At the time, when watching any sporting contest in which I'm partisan, I don't have the faintest idea if I'm enjoying myself. My dominant emotion is, I really hope my team wins so it will turn out later I'm enjoying myself now. That's the problem with living in the moment. We're too intelligent a species to be able to avoid living in some sort of narrative, and that involves not knowing how we feel in the moment until we have context for it. Too short-term a focus, and we've nothing to enjoy but sneezing. Too long-term a context, and it's all a plan to enjoy something we never get to, and anyway, we'll all be dead within a hundred years. We have no choice but to find some sort of medium term over which to give a shit, or nothing is anything. And once you've granted that, then all the delayed gratifications are variations on a theme, and the theme is chores now for jam tomorrow. Whether it's I want to build a cathedral or I fancy a sandwich, you're stuck in the middle with me.